Ladies and gentlemen, I want to start by thanking Doxford Union for inviting me today. When I told my friends on Twitter, well, not friends, but when I told people <laughs> on Twitter that I was going to speak in such illustrious company, my friend Stefan cracked an old Westminster gag. You may be facing your opponents, he said, but the enemy is sitting beside you. Both Katie Hopkins and I hate positive discrimination. Today I'm here to argue why, and perhaps, but perhaps from a different perspective. <laughs> I want to start with a story. In the early 1940s, when Vera Cooper Rubin told her physics professor that she'd been accepted into an arts college near New York City, he said, that's great. As long as you stay away from science, you should be all right. Thankfully, she didn't. Rubin was interested in watching the stars from the age of 10 and graduated in astronomy anyway. Then she turned down, then she was turned down from an astronomy program at Princeton because they didn't allow women. Undeterred, she went to another university and went on to show that there was vastly more dark matter in the universe than was previously thought and overturned some basic laws of physics by Isaac Newton. Nevertheless, for years, the, the scientific community ignored her work and even criticized her for challenging Isaac Newton's laws. Only later on did they accept them after some male colleagues validated her work. She still hasn't had a Nobel Prize for her work, despite having made some of the most significant discoveries in physics this century. What's more galling is there are countless women like Miss Rubin, ignored by the establishment, or ridiculed for being for too big for their boots because they were women or non-white. Now, like many of you, I oppose positive discrimination because I believe it's unfair. Why should someone get promoted just because, belong, just because they belong to a minority group? It's wrong, isn't it? So imagine this. Somewhere between 1 and 3% of Britons are from a white middle class, men back, uh, white middle class background, men who graduated from Oxford or Cambridge. Yet, they completely dominate the worlds of higher academia, politics, and business. Fewer women lead the FTSE 100 companies, the FTSE one, top, one, top 100 companies, than men who are called John. There's, more, there's 17 men called John, and just seven women who lead FTSE 100 companies. Are we really saying that there's only seven women in, in the UK who are qualified to lead Britain's top 100 companies? This, my friends, is the result of the most positive discrimination scheme of all time. A group of white middle-class men have successfully discriminated against anyone who didn't look like them for decades. And it's time we change it. This is why I'm opposed to positive discrimination. A few years ago, a celebrity went on television and said it was right to judge parents by their child's name. She said, it's the Tylers, the Charmaines, the Chantels. There's a whole set of things that go with children like that. And I tend to think that children that have intelligent names have intelligent parents. What is that definition of intelligence? Having a white middle class name. And such attitudes are pervasive, which is why we do have positive discrimination in this country in favor of people like us rather than people who are good at their jobs. Thanks for making that point, by the way, Katie. You may well think men, white middle class men are qualified to be at the top, but there's no evidence for it. I was going to make the point about orchestras, but you already made that for me. Look around you. There is positive discrimination everywhere. And because of this positive discrimination, you all lose out. Yes, even you the man at the back from Oxford who's a fan of Katie Hopkins, you lose out too. You might be thinking, this doesn't make any sense. How do I lose out? How do I lose out? I've hit the jackpot. But you do. If our companies and government hired talents from any gender, race, or background that they could find, there wouldn't be so much mediocrity around. We would have far more progress now than we did. This is from a recent article in the Wall Street Journal on why immigrants are more creative than the average population. It says, uprooted from the familiar, they see the world at an angle, and this fresh perspective enables them to surpass the merely talented. To paraphrase the philosopher Schopenhauer, I can't pronounce his name, sorry. 
Talent hits a target that no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. Right now, we could be traveling on hoverboards, flying, flying around the world at twice the speeds for half the cost. We could have solved the energy crisis or even a poverty. A woman Mexican engineer could have thought of a brilliant way to extend the phone batteries that we all complain about every single day. But since Apple hired its first high-ranking female executive in 24 years, only recently, you are still cursing them for the shit battery life on your phones. This is how you lose out. And this is why positive discrimination is seen. No. Why is positive discrimination seen as a way of helping people like me than perpetuating a system that already exists? and perpetuating fairness. I don't believe in positive discrimination. That's why I want to challenge the system. I want you to vote today against the idea of positive discrimination. But by voting for us, I want you to say enough is enough. Enough of the positive discrimination towards middle class white men. Let's have a more equal world where people are judged not by what their parents named them, not judged by who they know, but by their abilities and what they can offer. Vote against, positive vote against the positive discrimination that has held this country back for hundreds of years. Thank you.